Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. And yes, you see buttons all over the place here in front of you because we are going to get into it today and talk about celluloid buttons. Um, I do think that celluloid buttons are not anywhere near as respected as let's say Bakelite buttons which have lost a lot of value over the years because everyone and their mother and their grandmother and their uncles and their grandpas and their brothers have pulled those Bakelite buttons up from the bowels of the basement and the corners of someone's sewing room that had been neglected for years or set there prettily but unused. So the market is flooded with Bakelite. So therefore, the value isn't there anymore, whether it be in jewelry, which I do collect, buttons, which of course I also do collect, um, but there's still wonderful, yummy pieces of button history. But right next to that, I think one that should probably start overtaking the heels of Bakelite is celluloid. Why? Because it is one of our earliest forms of stable plastic. And for whatever reason, it just does not get the credit it deserves. It is something that can be easily molded. And, you know, most of the shapes that you will see for it will be round when it comes to buttons. You know, let's not get it twisted there. And I think that's totally fine. Like everything doesn't have to be shaped into an exact replica of, let's just say, Lady Liberty, for example. And also the color variations can vary pretty well with cellulo celluloid. They did kind of keep celluloid in either, I would call them the more naturalistic shades of color. So you're not going to see a lot of bright, pur like purple, oh my God, that would be absolutely amazing if we could find that, but you don't. But you know, purples and pinks and oranges and let's go and compare it to Bakelite again, which has greens, reds, I mean, just every color of the rainbow, just about if they could get a stable dye into it. They did, and of course, it makes for great fun, obviously. But some of us do like nature and natural colors, so if you are one of those people and sometimes you want a little bit of a pop of color, then go for celluloid. This has yellow. Well, I'll tell you about this one. It's not what it completely appears to be. But this one is red. I have another red one somewhere. I have this one, which is like a wine color or rust color. But most of it, like I said, will be a naturalistic shade of color, which there's always room for everyone at the table. Um, so as we go through this, I will give you, of course, as I normally do, some of the history on these buttons um, and as well on as on the process as how also how to test them, because that's like a very common question that I get for some of the buttons that are shown is how do you test? And I always tell you guys about that. Also, we'll talk about how to store them because celluloid, it is very important that it's stored properly um, because I will talk about some of the chemical compounds that are within and some of them are not good for your health as well as they do make great fire starters in the wrong way. So as I stated, um, this is a plastic that came from, you know, the 18th century I'm sorry, I said the 18th century. That's probably not correct, but the 1800s. Um, and the late, late, um, you know, right up through the late 1800s, celluloid was being used. The thing that most people did not know, as I stated before, is how flammable it was until, of course, it caught fire or maybe you had someone who was like, let me do a little experiment on this and see how easily it burns. And so it is one of those materials that eventually fades to the back. 
um, in history and gets replaced with, you know, materials that obviously are definitely not going to be fire worthy or they would be much harder to burn. And also celluloid acetate um, was a huge replacement for celluloid because celluloid was not only used in making buttons and I think I alluded to the fact that it's also used in jewelry, um, but also it was used in things such as toys, um, the film that television, movies, commercials, etc., was filmed on back in the day um, has it deteriorates over time so what they had to do is take film that was filmed on celluloid and move it over to a more stable uh, material which I believe is the celluloid I'm sorry celluloid acetate um, which is what replaced celluloid so so that our you know television movie commercial whatever was on television the news history could be preserved um, they did have to um, conservationist at that did have to take and you know move that film history over to a stable product not to say that if you're out and about and you happen to get into um, a decommissioned museum auction or something and that's where they have things in the museum that they're now ready to let go because hello they can only hold so much believe it or not even museums have a limit and so you might be lucky enough to come across some of that decommissioned film or obviously there are people who were photographers in their own right and people who were shooting movies and things moving pictures as they would call them back in the day in their own right and you might luckily be able to find some of that old film out in the world the thing to know is that you need to be careful because it's still flammable regardless of how old it is also the fact that it needs to be properly stored in a cool dry place so not cold but somewhere cool like 70 degrees to about 80 ish maybe a little bit you know 83 degrees is probably perfect as long as the air is dry um, so one of the things that we will also talk about today is the fact that oh and as I was talking about the fact that um, not only I got stuck on film for a minute I wonder why is it because I was on television and I am in movies maybe um, but vanity sets that's what this is from this um, piece that you see here not the cartouche this is all made of celluloid so celluloid very flexible very moldable and yes as you can see there's a doll here the body of this doll is made of celluloid and its face or head the arms are made of some other plastic I don't know what it is so you can find other items out in the world that are made of celluloid and toys as you can see being one of them so once again not something you'd want to give to your child or grandchild to play with um, because obviously if they especially put them in their mouth or whatever or just the fact that they are flammable is not safe so let's look at some of the stuff that we have on the table I have two of my charm strings here I don't know if you can see the one at the bottom see that one there's one at the bottom and yes the laptop is present we will be using that a little bit in this video and then here I have another charm string and I'm just showing you on these charm strings that there are some celluloid buttons on them so something to be careful of when you are making charm strings if you include celluloid you sort like this is the touch button part of it which means it's the end one of the two ends so not going to necessarily get squished up within the charm string and get you know damaged or scratch because it is at the end however I have this celluloid button right here which is in the middle of the fray and so you you know I do have to be careful and you see how I have this one presented on the side not turned like this and I mean it's an applied back so that's just how it is anyway 
um, but this button you just want to be careful as to how you display these so that they don't get scratched up or dented because one of the other negatives as far as these buttons go is the fact that they unfortunately crack easily if not properly stored or obviously if you accidentally squish this pretty hard with your fingers or something that does happen washing them is not always like the best thing the flat ones like this which is a layered celluloid button the layered ones i think they're fine to go through the wash i really do um, but you have to be careful of the heat of the dryer and obviously using super hot water. However, the applied wafer, which is what this is a sample of an applied wafer celluloid button, I would not want to put this in the wash because that water is going to get right in those little, this is a two hole, um, right into those two holes and it's going to get, you know, underneath this and the back is actually made of metal. You can even see like the steel underneath where the black enamel has scratched off. And you're going to have rusting issues as well as underneath this wafer, there's usually some kind of paper and I will just say cardboard like paper, maybe even some composite material that's holding the form and so obviously if that gets wet then once again that can cause damage so celluloid buttons in my opinion were never perfect for clothing although yes of course they were used for clothing but not a perfect material for them as a matter of fact i will show you in these buttons here you can see how this is rusty on the back that's from water and you can even see sort of around the edge right here where it's like under so that means underneath but the cool thing is that these were sealed up well enough where the paper because this is cardboard that you see underneath with the design on it i know my camera keeps adjusting because my hand keeps moving and then it has a clear celluloid bubble over the top of that and so this is a button that's made with three parts. So this is like a three part celluloid button with an applied clear wafer bubble. Cardboard design is on the yellow and black part underneath. And this metal, which is steel, is what's holding it all, you know, sort of together. So really cool button, but once again, water can be an enemy. Now, let's look at this one. This button is large and in charge. And you know me, going to break out the ruler. It measures two inches across, which means it's like, I think that means it's, I don't know what the diameter is, but it's two inches going across. So that's a big button. So this is something that, you know, would have been on a coat obviously I just can't imagine how big the buttonholes had to be for that and it probably was a swing coat s-w-i-n-g and that's where the coat would swing out and away from the body but at the the neck it would have one of these large statement buttons and of course a large buttonhole for it to go through and I'm assuming maybe a dry clean only deal because how else did this button survive in this condition? The condition on this button is excellent. And yes, use that soft toothbrush to, you know, clean up anything that you want. But you can see this button is a stunner. This is, you know, one of those runaway buttons. It's absolutely, even the back. I mean, I can actually lose a little tiny bit of turtle wax on a cotton ball to clean, you know, to make this, you know, shine up even more. But you can see there is no rust um, around the perimeter, as well as the fact that these buttonholes are whistle clean no discoloration in them. I could even see a little bit of the composite in there. So this is what you're looking for if you're looking for like high quality celluloid buttons, you know, for your collection and you're collecting because you're collecting for 
I would say value more than you are for anything else. This also is multicolored. So this, the way I would describe this as a textured, multicolored wafer celluloid button with an applied back because this whole thing was applied two holes so it has two holes and therefore the thread and you can even see where they added this little divot I don't know if you can see that on camera I think you can there right in here and that's so that the thread lays nice and flat in that little um, crevice and also look at the texture just absolutely stunning so there are different types of celluloid buttons, which a lot of people don't realize. They think that the applied wafers, which I have several of them here, here is another one, which is really, I think, a pretty button in amazing condition. And I actually have several of these that were gifted to me um, by one of you out there. So thank you so, 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 so much. Um, but these look as if they've never been used. As a matter of fact, this one right here, here, the holes are not even pushed through for the two hole so I thought that was pretty cool and if you do find what I call button anomalies those can add value to the button because there's something odd about it and it was a factory situation it wasn't human error as far as the user goes, it's something that happened at the factory. Um, and so, and the other thing with celluloid is that it can't, I did I tell you that it can crack? So this one, I think I just saw, which I didn't even notice this before. I think it's factory too, because it's not on the surface, but there looks like there is an internal, like a tiny little crack in there. So, you know, look at these with your loop if you need to. The other thing is you could definitely see around here a little bit of an enamel loss. But once again, you know this button was never used because the holes aren't even um, pushed through. So I thought that was an interesting one to show you. Um, this is a favorite button. Um, once again, a gift from one of you guys out there. So thank you. I think it was from Ms. S. You know who you are because you are awesome. Or it's from Ms. N. I would have to look in my little um, notebook that I keep as far as like what people gave me. But this one is super cool because it is a celluloid button with this open work of brass over the top so it has a brass overlay open work and down here you can see there's one layer of celluloid here I should have a pointer and I don't know where I put my pointer let me see if I can locate that I'm back so here you have one layer of celluloid and down here you have this pearlized celluloid underneath and then of course on top of all of that you have this open work with these gorgeous figural leaves little tiny um, brass seed that's in the center of each leaf in nature this wouldn't really happen this is like weird the seed would actually be more down here but regardless you have all this flourish and the maker was definitely skilled in design because they were like no let's not stop there let's put a beautiful frame or perimeter around this with this side scroll work and it's also textured and then you flip it over and you see how they applied the brass over the top and you have this as your shank which is right here and enameled on the back because you always want to finish it with quality and this is an absolutely stunning um, addition to my collection that I've had I'm gonna say for a few years now um, or maybe a couple years but it's really something special Another type of celluloid button, and a lot of people don't realize sometimes that these are celluloid buttons, are these carved celluloid buttons. 
So one of the things that they did is, of course, you know, molding, super easy for celluloid because you heat it up, get it and press it in that mold, done, you know, cut it out, etc. done deal. Um, then you can also, for some of them, carve them if they could get the celluloid up high enough, meaning thick enough, to do so. And then you could, you know, carve all sorts of fun designs in them. Oh, let's look at the square one. So we have this square one. This, honestly, even though it's square, it's not like one of my favorites, but it's it's there just as representation. And yes, they did make them smaller as well. So all of them were not just big, junky, um, chunky. Adios mio, I can't believe I just said junky, but chunky bits. They were, you know, look at these. This one is small. You can barely tell that this is a really dark, dark, dark green. And I can underneath here, this is an applied shank, of course, but under here I can actually see the cardboard composite. And so you have that. I, I don't commonly find them like that small. And something that I've been doing that I want to talk to you guys about. Oh, and let's look at this one first. This is one of my favorites. That's why it made it onto a charm string. And it is large and again in charge. It's not as large as this one, but it's it's a big it's a big boy, or bi uh, I think they call them big beauties. So if you're describing something like this, you would of course add big beauty and another big beauty to your description. But you can flip it over. You can see it's a wafer. That and the way that they actually add these is once again by heat heat sealing it. But what I love about this is just, this also, it reminds me of like, there's mountains and land on the left and right side, and you have this misty river like running through it. Absolutely beautiful. And it's also, this is like so creamy and soft in texture as well as the colors that you see. And then we're going to go over to this and take a look at Something that I've been doing is creating um, what I'm calling button tags. And let's see if that will clear itself up. There you go. And these button tags will have samples of different types of buttons on them. So this one represents, oh my goodness, celluloid. Look at that. And then I'll have a little tiny bit of history um, noted. And like I said, samples, I'm going to put like, I would say four to five I'm uh, no, sorry, three to five buttons on each card. Um, this one is enough because the buttons on here, like I said, celluloid tends to be a bit bigger in size. I do want to add a wafer button to this one though. So here I have these, um, you know, not a wafer. I want to add a stacked button to this, but these have like wafer buttons on it. This cap right here, this part is the celluloid. This entire bit is celluloid, and you've already seen that one on the back. And if you think this is interesting, um, an interesting way to display the buttons and, you know, have them live on something, please let me know in the comments down below, and I will show you more of these in the future. And also, every card that I made is different because I didn't want them all to be exactly the same. I just would find that probably a little bit boring as, and also as if it was a chore more than something I was doing, you know, for fun and for storage as well as for collection management. There you go, you're back home. So let's look at this one. So this one, it's so dark, you could barely see it, but this one is layered as well. And then of course, just simple swiping out, you know, a little bit of carving around here and here, it ends up creating, you know, a button that is more than something that's just average. Actually, is it this one? And then this one, this is, I think, a common button. I actually see this one pretty, actually it's in two sizes here pretty often and you can see they can also pearlize these buttons a bit and just make them a little bit more special 
So I hope that you guys found this to be interesting and also maybe you learned something new today. I don't know. But if you did, please let me know down below. And the next thing I want to do is just give you a little bit more information on these while you peruse what you could see out here on the table. Let's make sure you can see everything pretty clearly. I think you can. So some reading. You ready? Let's go. So the oldest celluloid is going to be black in color. So if you find black wafer celluloid, those are the oldest celluloid buttons out there. Um, once again, I told you they're highly flammable and can even cause, create noxious fumes. So that's why it's important that you watch the temperature, especially on the hot side when you're storing these. But oh, so for example, if you go up into an attic of someone who is or was, let's say, a seamstress or someone who collected, let's say, buttons or sewing memorabilia and you are hit with a chemical scent in the summer, that is hot because there's no air conditioning or if like I said you're in the attic or the basement or somewhere like that um, then back away from the room because that room needs to air out because it's not only the um, plastics you know the the chemicals in celluloid that might be impacting you but once again in button making back in the day they use formaldehyde arsenic to get the bright beautiful colors and other deadly chemicals so you definitely would want to you know be suited up correctly before you went into that room maybe even with a respirator and you also of course would want to air that room out um, and also on the cold side when it comes to celluloid that's when you sometimes get the cracking so like I said temperature is not a you know bad temperature too hot too cold not a friend of celluloid uh, what else can I tell you do, 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 do. I told you about that oh most celluloid um, they discontinued making in the 1940s maybe just a teeny bit like a couple years into the 1950s um, celluloid for the household you know was discontinued and when what I mean by that is of course they use celluloid like I said in lots of things toys jewelry vanity sets um, t television components radio component etc the list goes on and on and due to the flammability that is really the reason why they stopped using it and they found that there were other more stable and also more user-friendly materials that they could use to make plastic items. So how do you test whether or not you have something that's celluloid? Very easily, believe it or not, if, especially I'm going to give you two ways to test. One way is if you are out in the world and you are finding buttons that you think you want to buy and you wonder if they are celluloid or not, what you can do is vigorously rub that item on a safe area of your body. So you don't want to rub it like, you know, anywhere that you're going to like later have some sort of noxious exposure. And when it gets hot to the touch, you can then, and this is not a safe thing to do, you can smell it. And if it smells like camphor or something that's similar to Vicks Vapor Rub or mothballs, you probably have a celluloid piece. I mean, also use the knowledge that I'm sharing with you in this video. I just love this multi-wafer layered celluloid carved piece. I just, it caught my eye again. But you definitely, you know, you're breathing in potentially deadly chemicals so you you have to like weigh your level of risk and what you're willing to do I don't agree with doing that but I do agree with you know getting um, enough knowledge from me and other resources where you are able to identify exactly what you're getting 
The other thing that you could do, which you would have to do, of course, when you got home, and you have to be careful, like I said, of the applied wafers because the water will damage these buttons internally even if you cannot see it externally damage is being done but what you can do is um, boil a pot of water so you want it to be really hot and then what you do is you drop the button in there for just like a couple minutes because you just want the button to get really hot to the touch and then you smell it or you can even just dip an edge of it in you don't have to put the like you just hold it with tongs in the water and just like partially expose the button and then you'll take it out and smell it immediately and it should be steaming hot and if it does smell like any of the chemicals I described camphor mothballs um, Vicks vapor rub then you most likely have a celluloid button also obviously the description like looking at that button is very important um, I just saw another celluloid button on here here is one where my thumb is right here that's a celluloid button and you can see it's a wafer so, so you will the, it'll be kind of like a dumbfounding how many celluloid buttons you might actually have in your collection you just maybe never knew what they were or knew the fact that they came in a couple different variations well a few different variations um, and the other thing after testing your buttons obviously if you expose them to water dry them off immediately if they are a wafer button like this where it's applied to a steel back you can use you know first of all hand dry it carefully but then on a low setting use a hair dryer and on a cool setting and you know just to try to get in those holes and those little crevices to make sure that you dry all the water up and so some of the other names for celluloid is thermoplastic which makes sense because when it is exposed to heat it is very malleable and very moldable so I sort of like that name of thermoplastic it just sounds imagine you live like way back when this was invented and if that was the name given to it it would just sound so futuristic um, so I hope that this was helpful I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did please subscribe to the channel you know we are always here for you if you have questions you can just leave them in the comments I answer every comment as well as if you know even if it's you know giving you a thumbs up because I like giving you guys thumbs up and giving you a little heart which is a little bit of love which we all need in the world anyway so please leave your comments down below also please look at the description of this video I am for quite a while I have like hundred and fifty to two hundred ephemeral sets that I am giving away to first come first serve folks and the directions on how you can get your free packet is in the description as well as the comments I'll pin a comment so it's easy for you to find it in the description there are also discount codes and things like that for you guys to use and what else is there oh like I said make sure you subscribe to the channel without subscribing you cannot receive one of those free packets so hopefully you guys like I said oh and here's another this is a weird one and I kept trying to do extra research on this and in several um, areas that I found for reference that it is claimed that this is a celluloid button now I don't know if this is celluloid or not if you guys know for a fact that this is celluloid or if you believe it is please let me know um, the colors are amazing it's you know that beautiful ivory like I would call it an aged ivory color and it's just swirls this beautiful knot almost Celtic in design if you hold it this way it has this um, like almost vinyl plastic applied back to it so this this part is the applied back and then it's applied to the button 
and you can kind of see how it's cut. This is definitely not tagawa or vegetable ivory or anything like that. It's definitely a plastic. So if you guys um, believe that this is celluloid or if you have any other reference I could look at, that would be great. Just attach the link to this video in the comments area down below. I would love to hear what you think. I, like I said, I found two places, but those both of those resources, they were selling the button. So I don't know if, you know, that's a reliable source or not. Maybe it is, but let me know what you think. Also, please remember that your health is your wealth. Without your health, you have nothing. So please take care of yourselves out there and be safe. And oh, just a couple quick things, just to let you know of a few more celluloid items. As I go out on this video, guitar picks, knife handles, cutlery handles, 